what up guys today I want to make a video on basically all of the traders and how you can officially level them up uh, being a new player like myself I started playing about like a week and a half ago um, I quickly realized in order to get all of the gun attachments so you know armors and helmets and everything fun in general in this game you have to go through all of the missions and level up all of your traders uh, individually and uh, at first it was kind of daunting but once I quickly learned about what missions to do which ones were effective and and just got better in general with the game I quickly realized how easy this was so you can see I just started playing about like a week ago and I'm already level 5 I should be level 5 but I have to meet the money requirement uh, which is not a big deal I could easily just buy and sell stuff to them um, but anyways it's once I quick once I learned basically what I needed to do and how to do it it was very easy um, now I also have past experience I come from escape from Tarkov so I kind of know how this stuff works so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain basically what missions you should do and I'll have like two different pathways because usually what I saw uh, from watching videos and doing a little bit of research was people would give you uh, you know five missions to do and they say do these and, and, and that's that and they wouldn't give you any kind of alternate methods that you can do so I'm gonna show you guys um, I think at, at most two different options that you can do depending on what kind of player you are because some people like to hunt players some people like to do it casually you know I'm just gonna show you an efficient route and then I'm gonna show you basically a route that you can do if you just want to do it casually and do it at your own pace um, basically though for the traders there's three important traders that you want to focus on and with the priority being on Spectre because he's gonna unlock all your guns your attachments uh, your magazines your ammo all that stuff um, so he's he's the important one that you want to focus uh, the next one's gonna be Minty because Minty's gonna give you all of the armor helmets all of the equipment basically backpacks all that good stuff and then the last one's gonna be Shiro uh, because he's the one that helps you with uh, crafting your own you know ammo if you want to go AP if you want to go tracer all that stuff so those are the three most important traders that you want to level up I think the rest of them are going to come in at later patches and stuff. You could probably level up the, the hospital one. That'll probably give you uh, foods and maybe a little more medicine. But just focus on these three. Uh, Spectre, Shiro, and Minty. Those are the important ones. Um, so it's probably going to be easier just to show you without having to scroll through and tell you which ones to do. So I made a list here with two options that you can choose from. Now every player is going to be different, so just pick and choose whatever makes you feel more comfortable doing. However, option 1 is always going to be the faster method to level up your traders. Also keep in mind that you can trade out any of these missions that you'd like. For example, if you don't want to use the SMG to do your Phoenix kills, you can always choose the mission that requires you to do assault rifles or pistols, for example. However, the reason that you should primarily choose SMG is because the best mission requires you to use an SMG for whatever reason. So it's just smarter in general to use both, you know, all the missions that require an SMG. But honestly, they should just allow any weapon type. I don't know why they haven't changed that. So these are the missions I stuck with because they ended up being very easy to do once I got really comfortable with the game. Okay, so in terms of the equipment that you're gonna wanna use for this quest, like I said, you can come in very basic uh, you don't need good armor you don't need good guns you don't need anything um, unfortunately you're gonna be stuck with a SMG for a while if you want to do this efficiently um, but that's not anything to be afraid of because the SMGs are not that bad so right off the bat you're gonna have access to this front whole page right here um, for doing your quest I highly recommend to grab the MP40 this is the one I did in the very beginning and uh, it was it was very good very good when you get good with this you can um you can do a lot with just a very and it's only 2300 uh for the for how much it costs i mean it's pretty damn cheap all right here are the magazines you can see right here it's only 184 these magazines are dirt cheap um and it really is it's, it's a very very cheap gun for what you're trying to do and you're basically all you're going to want to do is take this gun in with maybe two extra mags right in your vest because you're going to want to get the very basic vest that gives no armor protection um, just so you can hold your armor there and if you want to go cheaper you don't even need to bring the vest you can just bring a backpack uh, but I highly recommend bringing this that vest and a backpack your bear that's all you really need to do these quests because you're hunting uh, you're hunting Phoenix you know you're hunting scabs it's not really the biggest thing um, 
So the only the only thing I do want to say about this gun is make sure that the gun is you know properly. If it's all the way forward like this, uh, I've had issues where it doesn't shoot, and then you get into a fight with a player, and uh, for some I forget how it is. Maybe it's like this. You can see there it doesn't shoot. So make sure the gun is always at this like halfway point, like it's ready to go, and that way you can shoot. As you can tell, I've had so many so many situations where I have like. When I get into a fight with a player and it was like this, and then I can't shoot him. So you know what I mean? So make sure your gun's always properly ready to get into a fight so that way you can, you know, get into the fight. Um, another thing too is you can easily see how accurate once you get good with the with the iron sights on this thing, they're not that bad. And you can easily see the recoil. Being able to control these shots is super easy. Like look at that. And um, the only the only bad thing about this gun is it's it's it has a slow fire rate but if you can just hit your shot i mean look at this there's almost no recoil to it as long as you pull down slightly and that's all you need um if there's any change that i would recommend after this i think once you hit level two or maybe even three for specter you get access to the mp5 right here and this is honestly I don't know if it's just because I've used it so much, but this is my favorite gun for doing these quests. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, 3100 I mean, it's really nothing. And um, the magazines are basically the same way. There you go. So you come over here and uh, this magazine. The only thing, see, like this gun is not really annoying because you have to basically, when you want to put ammo in there and it's, you know, empty, you have to pull it up, have it up there. Um, then put in your magazine and then you hit it and then it's ready to go um, same thing like the other gun though the recoil on this gun is like, nothing so you can easily control it um, like I said the only annoying thing is having to redo the, uh, the little thing every single time um, unless you don't run out of ammo and all you do is just you know let's say you shoot like half the magazine like this and then you have another clip you can do the, the the magpul thingy and then that's that you don't have to do the whole pin pull back or whatnot every time you could just do this as long as you don't run out of ammo um, but anyways as you can tell this gun's super cheap the recoil on it is almost nothing this is the second gun i would use and then after that it's up to you like i wouldn't use anything else but it's super cheap to take these guns in with a basic rig and a backpack and you can kill basically anyone now remember for the armor for the for the chest rig all you're going to want to do is honestly is take this i know some people recommend not even taking this because this provides zero protection this won't protect you at all the only reason i say to to get it is because you don't want to go and fumble with your backpack especially since the backpack makes a lot of noise now uh when you open it so i recommend just buying two of these primary ammo thingies and we'll wait for another one to come up and then just putting them like that you might even be able to put oops you might even be able to put three to be honest yeah if you wanted to put three but i would say at minimum i was doing two but you can put three on there but you put three of these things on there and you buy a backpack and that is it that is it you take nothing in the backpack you just do this just in case like you might clear the lobby you know and then you just make some money back kind of thing um but this is what i would recommend doing this also keep in mind um a way to have this loadout at the ready and your kiosk is make sure that whenever you um whenever you you know you scan these to buy them like i'm going to scan this i'm going to scan the backpack right to buy them make sure that when you come here to check out you click this star right here on the end of those when you click those stars it'll it'll highlight yellow um and it'll basically mean that now you can buy this from your hideout in the kiosk same thing goes for the gun i would recommend you know depending on what you want to get like let's say we wanted to stick with the mp5 let's grab the mp5 let's say we wanted to use this gun all you would do is, is uh, scan this right and then go to check out make sure you click the star it automatically will have the magazine in it have the mp5 and everything so uh really cheap like i said just click the star same thing goes for the uh yeah mp40 just do it the same way um but that's basically it so 
depending on what level you are, respect her. Use the respective guns, you know, like I said, if you are level one and you're just starting out, use the MP40. It's a very good gun. It's literally the same thing as this. Maybe a slower fire rate, but it, it does its job just as, you know, just as well. Then when you get high enough, high enough, I think this is level two, maybe level three, I can't really remember. Um, you just use this thing, this thing. I love this thing. I use it so much. The iron sights are so good on it. You don't need anything else. It's really nice. Um, so that's basically it. Now that you have your missions, you know, in check and you have the gear that you need, the very minimal gear that you need, um, go into raid. Honestly, like it, you have some days where you can't get out of a raid alive. And then you have some days where you'll just go in and, uh, just destroy everyone. In terms of the map, you can do either map. However, I highly recommend doing missile silo because it's a very small map and finding the players that you need and finding the scads that you need to kill. There's so many. Um, I can get up to, I want to say like 17 to 18 scabs. If I clear a whole lobby on Missile Silo and then I just stay there for a while and loot up while killing scabs, I think I've gotten up to 18. So uh, you can easily tell that, you know, if you have that mission where you got to kill 25, where is it? 25 scabs right here with the SMG. If I killed 18 in one run, you're set. You know what I mean? You just need to kill five a run. So it's like, it's you can do a lot and i so that's why i highly recommend doing missile silo um i would highly recommend learning the spawn locations on missile silo because the most important part about silo is you're going to want to rush the spawns right off the bat um and kill the players that way you don't have to worry about them and then you can worry about uh, you know scavs and, and loot and all that fun stuff um, but on silo there's a maximum of i want six players so when you get in there is going to naturally be you plus three other players. Um, so that's four total. There could be a team, it could be up to six players, meaning um, one of those four players that are in there could have a teammate, could have two teammates and it'd be a trio, um, but up to a maximum of six. Basically, anytime you go in silo, just think right off the bat that you're killing three other players. Just think that. Um, and always when you kill a player, if another player is right after him, it's typically his teammate, and that's not counting toward those three players. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. That and just play sounds, honestly. Um, so from this point, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of using the MP, MP5 and stuff and going in very bare minimum. I'll show you how easily it's done. And then, um, and then yeah, hopefully you guys will uh, kind of get the feel for everything. And like I told you guys, it's really not that difficult. Uh, it might be difficult in the very beginning. Just learn the spawns, learn the map, get better. Um, and I don't mean get better in a bad way. I mean, like, you'll get better as you continually do it over and over and over. And then you'll be able to knock these out so easy. So from here on out, I'm just going to show you pretty much raw footage of me clearing the lobby. Uh, I'm not going to show you the looting because that's the boring part. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to clear the lobby uh, if you just push spawns and play sounds, really. Really the best thing you can do for Silo is learn where everyone spawns. Uh, up ahead is a spawn location of somebody so you can tell I'm playing a little careful here. Here than this.
And that's the lobby life. Well, kinda, because if you count all those kills, that adds up to five players total for the lobby, and there could be a total of six. However, in this clip, I don't end up finding that last player. From here on out, I would actually just play super careful and uh, keep playing sounds and just loot up while you can. But that's the end of this raid. And remember, you're here primarily for the scav kills. So now your next goal is kind of to stay in the raid for as long as you can. Usually that you're kind of pushed out close. by your hunger and thirst. Uh, but you can normally rack up to like 15 to 17 scav kills and uh, get all your missions done in one raid if you get lucky. However, as you can tell in this raid you're about to find out, it's not in too well for me. So you can see in this next raid, as soon as I spawn, I'm immediately rushing the Phoenix spawns that I know of, uh, while also caring about the player spawns. And that's another lobby wipe. Now, I, that first guy I think was by himself, so the other two guys I think were together. So that makes two two teams, um, total of three people, meaning there should be one more player in the lobby. Um, but a lot of the times you don't need to rely on that being another player. You just kind of need to play sounds because I think there are occasions where nobody can spawn in and you have a slightly emptier raid. However, this guy could have also just extracted early, so there's no telling, just you gotta play safe at this point. And as you can see, once you've cleared the lobby, you can kill so many scavs and loot Good everything match. else that's left in that lobby. Uh, and you can come out with almost all your quests done, as well as getting loot to pay for your next adventures. I'll show you guys one more raid. Once again, you can tell I'm rushing my objectives and just going straight for the scavs, killing any players that I run into along the way. First time I've seen someone rush that far.
and that's the last lobby wipe. That was a total of four players, uh, with three of them being three different teams. So that's a, that's a complete lobby wipe. That's one that you can count out and kind of guarantee that there's nobody else in the lobby. Uh, unless one of them randomly split off, and that's just the weirdest play, but it usually doesn't happen. Uh, but from here on out, you can literally stay in the raid, like I said, and kill as many of the Phoenix as you need, and also loot and make a good amount of money, sometimes depending on how good the loot is that round. Uh, but, but that's basically it. That's the gist of all of the missions. They're super easy to do once you get the understanding of the map and just not be afraid of pushing players and you can easily get these quests done. Uh, but hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if it did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.